Close your eyes, close your eyes, and forget all about us tonight. I don't know how to take this. I don't see. Gregory was a good preacher, and he left a lot of sermons which really got into the fabric of society in the 8th and 9th century. In fact, his sermons were more popular than even Augustine's. And that probably explains why one of his sermons has kind of gotten into the fabric of society even today. In 591, Gregory was preaching on the Gospel of Luke when he came up with an idea that stuck. The idea was that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. <laughs> now, it was a little bit more complicated than, than just that, and a little bit more offensive. It wasn't just that it was Mary Magdalene, but he fused three characters into one. He, he fused Mary Magdalene, who had seven spirits cast out of her, with the woman in Luke 7 that came and, and washed Jesus' feet with the same type of story in John 12 where that is identified as Mary of Bethany, sister of Martha. And so in Gregory's sermon, he said that basically Mary of Bethany and Mary Magdalene were the same lady and that she was a prostitute. And that, even to today, has stuck with us as we believe that Mary was a prostitute. What's it all about? March 12th, 6.04, after years of illness and not being able to get out of bed, Gregory finally died. Immediately, almost immediately after his death, he began to be known as Gregory the Great. He was the second pope to be given that, that honor of being the great. Leo was the first. He was God's consul. He was God's ambassador. He had changed the face of what it was to be pope. The papacy after this time would be a political office. It would hold political power, which it had never had before. And Gregory never wanted it for himself. But it was forced upon him by the circumstances into which he was born and into which he became Pope. Years later, the reformer Calvin would start to appreciate Gregory. He would say things that he would not say about any other Pope. He was the last Pope in Rome as far as Calvin was concerned. He was the last one worthy of the title. Calvin grew to appreciate this, this man who could come in and run the administration of a country without losing his soul. Gregory will be remembered for four things. The first is, is that he changed what the papacy was. It had a power after Gregory that it had never had before. Even though Gregory didn't want the power, he still had to grab it, had to take hold of it for the safety of the West. Gregory was the one that sent Augustine of Canterbury to England. He was the one that spearheaded this, this idea of evangelizing the English. These white angels that he had seen in the slave places. Gregory was the first monk to become Pope, and in doing so, he raised the place of monasticism. And he left writings that were valuable for those who would come behind, that would recognize the importance of things like pastoral care, 
and humility and care for the poor. And these are just some of the things that made Gregory great. And in the letter, John had used the words Echino... Ecumenical. Ecumenical patriarch. Okay. One of the... Are we ready? In 540... Regulus was born. Let's try it again.